Super Tour champion, Grand, two-time Grand Prix champion, and Masters champion, Mike Pastilnik, currently 4-0. You know, Mikey P, one of my favorite guys ever to play Magic. I really yeah. got to say that. Uh, All right, so we're about to come into round five action. There you see Daryl Ayers on the left, Ali Trazi on the right, shuffling up. Shot. There's a shot Darryl of Mr. Ayers. Ayers. There's Ali Trazi. And we've got uh, Rashad off to get us Daryl's deck list. Take a look, take a look at what he's playing. It's round five action coming to you from GP Baltimore. I'm Sheldon Menery along with Steve Saden. Nate Price over in the booth right now. Rashad Miller uh, as our as our four man. Errors against Entrazi. Yeah. Rashad doesn't spend a ton of time on camera anymore, but he's the reason why this happened. He is indeed. Uh, don't think that Ali likes his hand. I think it's a two lander. All right, and just got Daryl's deck list. It looks like Daryl's playing a pretty traditional blue black control deck. And Ali Entrazi does indeed ship his seven. All right, now one interest, uh, two, Daryl has 27 lands in his deck, while Ollie has 26. I was like, if you're playing a dedicated control deck like this, you don't want to miss a land. Right. That's really, really bad. A lot of people, you know, they'll try to play control decks that have 24, or even, you know, a normally fine 25 lands, mm -hmm. and they'll just run into so much trouble. Like, they'll lose all sorts of control mirrors, just can't keep up. You know, they'll just get destroyed by mana leaks when they really shouldn't. It's just, you got to, I mean, you just have to play a critical density of land. One of the, one of the skills that, that tends to differentiate the good PTQ player from the PTQ winner, the Pro Tour player, is making solid mulligan choices. Yeah. What, what, kind, what advice would you give the legion of PTQ players that are listening to us right now uh, on mulliganing. If you're even thinking about mulliganing, you probably should. Like a lot of times, you know, people see these sort of odd hands, and it's like, uh, can I? You know, I've got two lands, but I'm on the draw, and you know, but I've got you know these cards that are really just get rid of them. The hands that you want to spend more time thinking about are the ones that you like immediately think you should mulligan. It looks really weird. Spend a little bit more time. You might notice. You know, you might just be missing something. Okay. All right. Players off to a um, well, definitely not a fast start. Yeah. Well, again, Can't we expect them to play that much stuff for the early turns. You know, this is really going to be about making land drops for a while. And the fact that Ollie Mulligan, mm -hmm. he has one less land in his deck, and he's on the play, could all really haunt him. You see he's, he's gone through two Evolving Wilds already. Yeah. Oh, a Lingering Soul. That's a that's actually a huge card in this matchup. And it resolves. And he's it playing is. Rashad Miller tokens. It's what the it's 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 what the uh, the, the top players are all playing. <laughs> so now Daryl has a few copies of Black Sun Zenith and a few copies of Curse of Death Souls. He's going to need to stick one of those at some point, or he's just going to die to these tokens. Like, Ollie's going to, Ollie probably is seeing the matchup that he's in, probably not going to flash back that Lingering Souls until after, right, after Daryl deals with the first two. Yeah, or at least deals with one of the tokens. Ollie's, you know, pretty content to just sit back. He's got to think twice. He's going to be able to dig a little bit. Uh, he's got a couple of copies of Liliana in his hand. Uh, so, you know, he has other things he can do with his mana. He doesn't need to, you know, just walk into a Black Sun Zenith. Uh, he knows that Daryl doesn't have any real threats that he can play before mm -hmm. turn five or turn six. Uh, looks like Ali is, doesn't have another land in his hand at this point, though. Not yet. All right, now, 
Uh, is he going to flash back and sink twice? Yeah, he is on his main phase in search of that land. You know, he just he knows that he doesn't have to worry about Daryl playing anything. And he did get a land. Yeah. yeah the worst thing that Daryl can play for him right now, that he could reasonably have, is uh, a curse of death soul. <laughs> okay, so now that lingering souls is basically invalidated. Uh, dealt with the two existing spirit tokens. Oh, now, Ali drew Seek Realm Coast, which would come into play tapped here if he has too many lands, and leaves him unable to play his Gideon that he has in his hand. Yeah, so he's just going to have to pass the turn. Interesting okay. that he chose not to play the Liliana. Liliana. He has Mana Leak. Uh, I guess he is respecting the possibility that Daryl could have Great Titan as his threat. He's just not wanting to walk into that. Alright, now Holly's going to go ahead and play that Oleana. He's going to get mana leaked. And he, uh, Daryl flashed back to Sync twice in there. See that both players have. Uh, oh, the second Liliana. Second Liliana. Both players have gone for the uh, the full art uh, lands. And Daryl was clearly thinking about that, but uh, ultimately decided to dissipate. Okay. Again, this. This mana advantage is just such, just so huge. Well, you, I, you know, we, we talk a little bit about incremental advantage, and this seems like it's it's a building advantage. I mean, it, it's, it is incremental in that it's piece by piece, but the pieces are larger and larger every turn yeah. that we go by. Now, at any point, you know, if Daryl's able to keep the Consecrated Sphinx on the board, he's just going to win. Right. So yeah, Ollie's cast a third Liliana. Which, Daryl again, Natalie. Do you think that um, uh, less experienced players will give in to their frustration against control decks? Like, cast, counter, cast, counter, cast, counter. They, they sort of let the, the frustration of not being able to resolve spells get to them. And, and try to force plays into places that they otherwise shouldn't. Oh, definitely. And you know, playing against a control deck, you know, if the game's gone long, it's going to be really tough no matter what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Every turn, you know, they're drawing more cards. You know, they're, you know, they have what seems like this sort of impenetrable defense. And then, you know, players will make mistakes where they'll either, you know, play into counter spells too readily, mm -hmm. or they'll be too afraid of counter spells and just wait and let your opponent actually draw all of that. Yeah, I, I've seen, you know... It, it I, can go both ways. Why didn't, you know, a couple of situations I've asked players, well, why didn't you cast that? You know, you had this in your hand, why didn't you cast something? Ollie just stuck a Gideon Jura. Yep. Actually, not the scariest card. No. Unless, you know, Daryl doesn't have an answer. Like, you can start bashing. Right. Uh, I think there's Consecrated Sphinx in Ollie's that, hand. And there's oh, it's attacking. Hand. Does. Looks like, yeah, Daryl has a Tribute to Hunger. Curious Still if he's going to play... Doom Blade play. in there, too. He plays the Doom Blade. Yep. Yeah, it's just... Once you get to this stage of the game, it's really unlikely that your blue black control opponent will be without a removal spell. Right. And uh, Consecrated Sphinx just fell at the hand of Tribute to Hunger. Now, Ollie's tapped out. Is Daryl going to go at... No, he does not cast his Consecrated Sphinx. Certainly got it, enough mana to cast it and then have mana leak back up, right? One, right. Two, well, Daryl has the Nefalia Drown Yard. So he, he might just, you know, hey, I've got a bunch of lands. I've got a ton of good answers in my hand. I'm just going to sit back. I'm eventually going to win the game on this drowning. 
you know, he knows that Ollie's playing an Esper deck. He, you know, very well. Oh, it's a Blue Sun Zenith. The three. Ollie very well might not have any Ghost Flutters. He might not have any way to deal with that Nefalia Dragon. We happen to know from looking at his list that he does not have Ghost Flutters. So, unless Ollie. Oh, that, that's not quite. That's not necessarily an assumption that Daryl can make at this point. He knows that Ollie's playing three colors. Mm -hmm. I don't think he can say for sure, but it's definitely likely that Ollie would have access to you know, between zero and one ghost colors. Like it's just really tough to play these colorless mana sources when you need Playing to a free have, color deck. And like he's already seen blue blue and black black in Consecrated Sphinx and Liliana and White White in Gideon. Right. And more land for Daryl. Yes. And a lot of times you'll see, I guess, less experienced players complain. It's like, oh man, I drew all these lands. Uh, uh. Like, you know, Daryl's so happy to have these lands. Like, you know. Karn getting milled away. Day yeah. judgment, probably not significant in the matchup. But, you know, again, it's good for Daryl to know what removal suite he can expect out of all. Yeah, that. Daryl's just going to be able to keep working. Yeah. But yeah, but, so if Daryl if Daryl gets on one more land here, then he'll probably play the Sphinx because he'll have enough to play the Sphinx, back it up with the Mana Leak, and still drown Yard on Ollie's turn. Yeah. No, it's, again, he doesn't even really need the Sphinx at this point, and I'm guessing that he's probably guessing that Ollie has a way to deal with it should he play it. Soren, Lord of Innistrad. But you know, Daryl has Curse of Destiny, so he's just going to let it just going to let it resolve. Right now it's interesting. So Soren's ultimate ability minus six destroy up to three target creatures and or other planeswalkers. Uh, return each card put into a graveyard this way to the battlefield under your control. Daryl, you know, no creatures, no planeswalkers. He doesn't care. Like, he's got the Curse of Death Hold down to mm -hmm. neutralize any tokens that uh, Ollie might make. Alright, just gonna sit back. Gonna keep milling with Drown Yard. Well, I mean, now there's... There's some... Oh, is he making them? Karn. Karn. Seven mana for oh, Karn. Geez. Yeah. Yeah, not looking good for Ollie and Trazi right now. Ollie has a mana leak and a really sad look. On <laughs> right, you can, yeah. Sometimes you can, you can tell the, the by the body language. Yeah that he's not liking his chances here. Now, what's... Just removed, uh, made Ali exile a card from his hand. That Lingering Souls probably doesn't do him much good right now, anyway. Nope. What... What is... Ali's game plan? I mean, does he play out this game just to see what the rest of Daryl's removal suite is? Does he hope that, I mean, is he hoping that he's going to get to lead Daryl into some kind of mistake? Anyway, you know, what's his, what's his, what's, he's got to, he's got to see a plan. How is he going to win this game? Well, he just resolved to Gideon. Uh, Daryl can only, he can only carn away one of Ollie's Planeswalkers this turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I mean, playing he's, was playing the Karn uh, a little bit of a, a iffy play for Daryl. I mean, now if he can, if if Ollie can get Soren's ultimate off, well, before you know, before Ollie can do that, uh, Karn can exile can exile, exile the Soren. Yeah, so there's never that opportunity. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, 
Daryl just upped Karn again, removing his uh, Consecrated Sphinx. And then next turn, he's going to be able to use Karn's Ultimate, minus 14, to restart the game, leaving in exile all non aura permanents, cards exiled with Karn Limiter, liberated. Then he puts those into play. No, he's not going to do that yet. He just gets rid of the Soren. Yeah, it seems like it seems like restarting the game yeah. with Karn, restarting a game that you're winning, going to win. You don't need to. Yeah. You don't need to. I mean, I could maybe see it as a tactic if you were, if the clock was a factor. Right. Yeah. No, it's actually very relevant. Like if it gets, this is going to be a fairly slow matchup. Uh, if it gets to game three. No. Five minutes left on the clock. You might not be able to sit back and wait and win right. the Valley Brown Yard. Uh, yeah, I, but I, can, I can beat you five turns in a row with this Consecrated Sphinx. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> take very long. <laughs> uh, Ali finally got to seven mana. Is finally able to get you know additional mileage out of his Forbidden Alchemies. Thirteen hundred players at uh, GP Madrid. If you were right. curious, yeah, and they're just uh, getting to the end of day one over there. Uh, Joel Calaflo, nine out. Okay. Raph Levy, uh, Martin Giza, and Vincent Lamont, all eight one. Levy currently tied with Kai Bude for first place in lifetime pro points yep. at five hundred points. Off to an eight one start there. Seems like he's gonna pass him this weekend. He's gonna pass him this weekend. Oh, and Ali finally conceded to Daryl. He's gonna need. He's gonna need that time to. Yeah, he knows that if they're gonna finish a game three, a three-game match, he's gonna have to get going. Step out while they're sideboarding. Uh, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Alright, we're back here, GG's Live coverage of Grand Prix Baltimore. I'm Shelton Mennery. I'm in the booth with Steve Satan. Uh, we're in the sideboarding of game between games one and two. Daryl Ayers versus Ali and Trazi. Ayers took quick control of game one after a, a mulligan to six and a few land drop misses for Antrazi. 
generally com in complete control all the way. You'll notice a sheet of paper there that uh, David uh, Daryl Ayers is referring to. Uh, some notes on the sideboarding. Uh, this is perfectly legal. Uh, when you're not when you're not in the game, you're allowed to reference notes. When a game is going on, when a game is in progress, you're not allowed to to reference any notes that you haven't made in that game. So you couldn't bring a sheet that tells you how to play your deck. But between games, you can use use notes from outside the match to to sideboard. Yeah. Uh, looking at the looking at the sideboard uh, of both these decks again in the in the sort of control on control matchup we have uh, Daryl Ayers with the blue black control uh, Alain Trazi with the, the blue black white control the extra control um, probably a significant amount of sideboarding from both players coming up uh, we'll probably see uh, <laughs> Steve, what do you think <laughs> about the possibility of uh, Ollie going with batter spells? I could easily see that happening. He has a lot of cards that he wants to take out. He doesn't want Curse of Death Hold. He doesn't want his spot removal. That's fine. That's a good threat. It doesn't die to creature removal. Mm -hmm. How do I get you replay it? Oh, no. oh you exiled the uh, farm. Oh, and you thought Daryl? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, he'll just eventually die. That's how you break them in your patch. Just do that cards. Now, there's a question. Uh, Ali may have accidentally taken Daryl's consecrated oh, sphinx so while they were shuffling uh, when he took all you. the cards back from <laughs> Karn. Five ways. Uh, so, we'll, we'll get uh, the word from Rashad in a minute, find out what you happened there. Oh, they are. Yeah, they're playing the same color sleeves. Yeah, very confusing. Are you all set? Yeah. Oh, I have my cards back. Okay. Borrow my filter. Once again, I'll remind you that Steve and I are That's both nice. on Twitter. If you uh, if you want to tweet to us any questions uh, that you might have as the matches are going along. Uh, just keep safe. Supplementary. Uh, you know, some folks choose uh, handles as their Twitter, Twitter names. Then I can never find them. Right. <laughs> like, I, I want to I want to follow Nate Price on Twitter, but he says he never <laughs> He says he never no, Nate, what is your Twitter name? Yo, it's Price. Price and Price, which is actually a very good yeah. like, Twitter name, but like, also like, difficult yeah, to find. That's how. To find. They, so if you want to follow like, Nate Price, it's at Price and Progress. Like, yeah. All right, it seems as though we've got the the confusion regarding the the Consecrated Sphinx resolved. The players are shuffling up. Are going to go to game two? I was playing this deck, I thought Soren took everything. I thought Soren said permanent. So I was like, I was like, I was like, I sort of beat down plan like from either of these guys that we saw from on Turton Wall in game three in the, in the last match. Yeah, and these decks, uh, like, Ollie has enough threats in his deck that Daryl's going to want to hold back, uh, try to get extra mileage out of his counter spells, out of his removal spells. So like Owen had sure. very intimate knowledge of Ochoa's deck, right? Which allowed him to you know, be able to shift gears. Yeah. Right. So both players uh, keep their sevens. Yeah. And think about you know, and again, these players they just want to make their land work. Right. Is a matter skull. You'd uh, you'd anticipate that, but he's probably going to wait to run that out there. Definitely. Like he's got a bunch of lands in his hand. 
Uh, there's no real, he's under no pressure to do anything quickly. Oh, but he, he does not gonna, hesitate. He is going to run it out there. I guess he wants to play a, um, play a threat before Daryl can get to six mana and play a card of his own. Right. Before he can you know, play that concentrated space. Play a grave title that he has. Well, if he, I mean, he plays, if he plays Batter Skull. Oh, and, and Ollie is not stopping. Capped out for a concentrated space. Game. Which also gets two bladed. And Daryl gets back at Sphinx Fight. I guess, you know, all he sees that Daryl already has an Italia drowning on him. He knows he can't just sit back and wait. So he's got to, yeah, he's got to go. He's got to lean the pressure on him. If any of those, I mean, both the Batter Skull and the Concentrated Sphinx, Sphinx are serious threats. They're not. You know, they're 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 not anything mid rangey. They're they're something that if they stay in play, they're gonna provide a powerful advantage right. to Ollie throughout the course of the game. So if right. he that can, concentrated Sphinx that stuck around for even a turn, it's probably would have just won him the game right there. Because then he can just play with that Sphinx in play, protect it with his protect it with his you know, any counter spells he has. Um, and and Daryl has to deal with it, deal with it, right? So he's not. So then, you know, if if you're facing a threat, if you're if you're facing an immediate threat, right. if an if the alligator is trying to eat you, you forget that you're trying to drain the swamp. You have to deal with the right. alligator. <laughs> You know, not that much has happened so far in this game, but Ollie's already in a tough spot because of Daryl's value drowning. And again, he's got—he's really got no way to deal with it. Yeah. Okay. Daryl's probably going to wait a little while before he starts using the drown yard. He's well, he's used it once out. already. Yeah. And got nothing terribly significant. Daryl's tapped out. Ollie uses that opportunity to play Forbidden Alchemy. Relatively quickly makes his choice. Yeah. Oh, and he hits a lingering soul. All right, so that's going to give Ollie a very real breath of victory. The thing you don't want to face down if you're Ali and Trazi is the control deck with a grip full of cards. Which is exactly what Daryl Ayers yeah. has right now. Yeah, it's pretty unpleasant. Also... Problem, like, Ali just doesn't have enough threat to get in. To get over the hump of Daryl's hand. The surgical extraction to going to take... He's gonna, he's gonna go through. He's gonna go through. He's, he might even be thinking, "Hey, if he's got ghost quarters, I'm gonna take it." Right. He's gonna find out that he doesn't. Well, you have to choose a card in a graveyard. He took the link. Oh, right. right. He getting rid of all those. Now knows exactly what Holly has to work with. This is not looking good for Ollie. Didn't play it. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was thinking about playing it, so I didn't, I didn't have any. Didn't, like, they no. sort of see that little so yeah, he that, that head tilt. Well, you know, a, 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 a player of his skill sees the, you know, sees the, the cascade effect of each card that gets played. Yeah. And, you know, Daryl made his first eight land drop. Got a bunch of cards in his hand. Daryl's playing Snapcaster Mage. 
play probably here is is not use the blue sun zenith until he absolutely needs to to pull his hand out. Or, or he can use the blue sun zenith to help you know, to help get rid of Holly's library. Yeah. Um, target player draws right. next turn. Snapcaster Mage getting into the red zone a little bit. Yep. Uh, probably not the way that Daryl's winning. Gonna try to force through. That mid mouth may come in. Yeah, Ollie just. Ollie knows. Well, he's playing with his cards upside down in his hand. Right. <laughs> I yeah. think. I think. Yeah, he sees. He the sees the writing on the wall. But there's no way that's resolving. <laughs> and I mean, you know, would you? Would you choose to? Coalition reigns. Probably has the to be drowning. Yeah. yeah, or else he's just going to lose. Uh, okay. uh, Ollie yeah, passes his turn without doing anything. Uh, he might be waiting to get a 12 man so he can pay for double man. He's two turns away from that. He's got a, he's got two lands in his hand. Yeah, so because of the value of the yard, Daryl doesn't have to resolve a single threat. Right. When they get but Ollie's got I mean Ollie can't just sit there and and, and wait to die. He's gotta he's gotta try yeah, to force something. He's gotta he's playing a batter spell. Yeah. Daryl, you know, so to choose which of his many answers is going to so be. Simple negate. Daryl count his mana up. Might be thinking about using <laughs> blue suns in it, or he's using a mana leak. Yes, he's uh, looking to make sure that he can resolve Karn. Right, he doesn't, yeah, he, also, he wants to give Ollie the chance to play less. Daryl has eight mana right now. This is the gate in his hand. Uh, oh, just mills and untap. <laughs> well, is he confident that he's going to resolve this card? I think he's one mana short of Karn plus the gate. He is. I thought that he was going to lose his mana. Uh, oh, he, he didn't have enough blue. Oh, no, he's got three blue. He had, but he played a mana. Oh, right. So he couldn't lose his mana at the end of the battle. Right. Fortunately for him, yeah, this was all. For, fortunately for him, Ali doesn't have anything, doesn't have right. counter magic of his own. But Daryl knew that it was pretty unlikely that Ollie would because he'd he already seen his hand. deck. Right. And, and deck for surgery. Uh, Ollie attacking Karn. This is Batter Skull, but uh, 
quickly gets blocked by a snap pass from Mage. that Ali didn't have a counter spell, but... He had something significant of his own on the, co on the crackback. Oh yeah, he, something way better than <laughs> right. a counter spell. <laughs> he has a snapcaster of his own. Craters. Grass. One of Ali's signature cards. Okay. This is the great effect uh, and we're winning national class here. Ollie looking through Daryl's graveyard. So you know, if Daryl had just played nothing. The, the drown yard plan. Yeah. He you know oh, you would have just won. Yeah, you I mean you said that. Yeah, you, you said he doesn't have to play any threats to So is this a case of less experienced player getting a little happy with the, you know, he's got a lead in this game, he gets a little happy with it. I, I'm not sure that it's a question of experience. I'm not, like, he definitely, it was a very, uh, sort of, you know, it, there's a lot of hubris going on there. there. <laughs> like, you know, he's pretty confident that he's going to get his turn to resolve, which he did. Which he knows did. that, you know, only a couple of answers that Ollie has in his deck. <laughs> but you only need to draw one card. And he did draw that one bullshit. And then right. let him to just get right back into the game. Well, he oh, scoops. Wow. Yeah. He's gonna give himself a chance to go to game three, so yeah, saving, you know, saving time. He wants to make sure they have enough time to play a good game. Just 10 minutes on the clock. Wow. So that, that could have been a significant factor in him scooping, him scooping oh, right there. Right. Daryl may have been able to win yeah. Yeah. one game win and a draw. I think so. Yeah. Clearly just unhappy with this. Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, my God. You got to. I. I feel it. It, it seemed to be the, the, the way I read his face when he cast Khan in the first place. It seemed it seemed like he thought he had the gate back up. And then when he recounted his mana, he realized he only had one left instead of two. Um, but it was like, I mean, he, he was counting, he, he counted his mana, and he hadn't actually committed to the Karn just yet. All right, so the players actually have 14 minutes to get some mixed up at the end of game one. Thank you, Rashad. Rashad Miller, correct staff on the floor. I think Daryl definitely, he just got a little bit overconfident. He just thought that he had the match. He needed more land. He needed more land? Yeah. I think it was like you know, again, five minutes. Very good that all he was able to have that patient. He, he, he he used his I do land for like polish and match. Right. So he could have you know, used five to make him value five. I don't mind trying to It's like a confidence was never so sick. He could find an opportunity to do it. He may have been trying to play around double mana leak. He may have just been waiting for something. Oh and no! He did it. <laughs> My hand looks so bad now. Well, he's got. I mean, he. Ali at that point is really in a. In a situation where it looks like he's going to lose, right. so he has to give himself 
whatever slim opportunity there is to win, but uh, uh, you know the the window to to jump through. Uh, you're gonna lose anyway. You have to you have to figure on okay. The only way I'm gonna win is this better than the other half. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give myself the chance for that to happen. Yes. And if it doesn't, also it's gonna lose anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I got I got a sworn up. Anything else? Yeah. Like Christmas. 14 minutes left yeah. on the clock between these two grinding control decks. That might not be enough. Like both games uh, ended very early well because of yeah. concessions, which you know yeah. they were made with yeah. respect to time. Yeah, it, it makes us. I, it makes oh, Ali has not pulled seven cards that he likes. No. Only I think there's a single land in there. Oh, yep. But that is Daryl. Daryl's shipping his as well. So they're both going to go to six. Uh, occasionally I've seen players like at Friday Night Magic where they both mulligan into six and agree, why don't we both just choose seven? A friendly mulligan? A friendly mulligan. That's not me. You can't do that. <laughs> You're not allowed to decide to, go to, to, to both of you go to seven. Now, I've also seen players both go to five, and then uh, one and one of them suggests, why don't we just go both go to zero and play off the top? That is perfectly legal. <laughs> like. So especially with the players mulligating looks less and less likely is at least two lands in Ollie's hand, at least three in Daryl's. Daryl's got the first Daryl's got the first choice. Oh no. Oops! Accidentally drew seven cards. Yep. So goes back to top of the library. And he's going to be forced to mulligan down to five? No. New penalty for that is shipping one of them back. Okay. okay. Right, that saves time. Yep. Which is very yeah. relevant. Ooh, when relevant. Right. Time on the clock. Obviously, if the judge, there's a, there ha actually happens to be a judge sitting at the table. Had the judge felt as though he did that intentionally, it would it'd be a different conversation. Obviously, but just, it was simply a mistake. We have uh, remedies in the Magic Infraction Procedure Guide. So Ali on the turn three Praetor's Grasp. Notice that both players started playing pretty briskly there. They're, yeah, they they're, know. They're both interested they in... Wanna, they want somebody to win. Right. Praetor's Grasp. All right, now Praetor's Grasp allows you to search target opponent's library for any card and exile face down. You may look at that card and play it for as long as the card is exiled. Okay. So, Ollie yeah. did not take a spell. Didn't take a creature. Didn't take a snapcast mage. Didn't take a mana lake. He took an Akali Drown. Seems like he's obviously taken one of Daryl's course to victory. Uh, in the interim, we saw Ollie cast Soar in Lord of Innistrad, which the gate got negated. And another one is getting dissipated. We see that Daryl has Ghost Order already, so you know, Ollie is not going to be able to win by decking Daryl with that Ollie Drowner. So he does get another land, and he doesn't have to worry about Daryl drawing you know, the Drown Yard and being Ollie with it. One of, the, one of the questions we just got uh, over the Twitter sphere um, is, is it legal to agree to draw game three and then go to game four? After players have mulligan. After players have mulligan. Perfectly legal. 
All right, so you can't just agree to draw up to seven cards, but you can draw the game, intentionally draw the game, play a fourth game. Yep. And then same, same players on the play, everything else is the same, but you both start with seven cards. Right. Very important distinction to make. Yes. So there's mana leak mana available for uh, Daryl to counter Gideon, which is certainly a card that could end the game quickly. Oh yeah. You see, Daryl again has that uh, arm that really turned on him last time. <laughs> but it's something that could allow him to secure a pretty quick victory this game should he resolve it. That Karn last game truly was liberating. <laughs> Again, both players playing at a at a pretty brisk pace. They do not want this match to end in a draw. They both already have a loss. Uh, if they drew here, they would still need to go undefeated throughout the rest of the day to make it to day two. Exact same thing they need to do if they took a loss. Right. The so, Liliana gets the mana leak. On case for it. Snapcaster. The Snapcaster Mage. Presumably, Daryl's going to bring back Manali. He's got a Manali of his own for the Snapcaster. Daryl pays for it. With the Snapcaster. Uh, he's now using surgical extraction to take out Holly's mana leak and give himself a power pass to pass Karn Liberate. The question is. Is there a sufficient amount of time for Karn to make a difference in this game? They just, uh, they just call time. Just call time. They have four additional minutes. Now, you know, Daryl's going to have to play really quickly, but Ollie's going to have to play quickly too in order for that to happen. Right. There's no. There, there's. No rule that says that just because time is a factor, Ali has to play quickly. Correct. He can't play slowly no. in order to take advantage of the clock. But he he's under no he's under no compulsion to speed up his pace of play. Correct. Now Karn already up to ten loyalty. If Daryl happens to draw another good threat that he can exile himself to Karn and then restart the game. That could secure a victory for him. Soar in the order of Innistrad, coming down for Alec. Makes a dude. Daryl's casting a main phase from an alchemy, looking for something that he can put under the Uh, ground yard, which you know normally be absolutely great, but uh, won't be able to win the game quickly enough. Uh, now he's gonna go ahead and exile Soren, dropping back down to seven counters. Locally uh, at our modern game, so we call that putting it in the trophy piece. Yeah. Okay. When you exile something with card. 
I prayed for that. was the prayer. Oh, that was the prayer. Yeah, this shuffling is brutal. It's also, you know, eating away time on the clock. Even though it's obvious that the players are doing it relatively quickly. You still need to spend enough time to actually randomize the neck. Correct. Haymakers, um, maybe a batter stall. An unanswered oh. batter stall might be able to go all the way. Ollie just passed by a batter stall. And he also passed by a lingering stall. So it's in favor of taking concentrated swings. Ollie knocked the. You know, Ollie might actually be able to win this game. He knocked the card up to two counters with. Uh, the Lingering token that he made with Soren and the concentrated thing. It looks like because Daryl's hand is empty. Right. Oh, yeah. oh that was a pretty good feel. There's some stopping. Uh, I know there's a judge on hand. All right, Daryl just runs as soon as oh. he gets so excited when he threw the game play. Did he? Oh, he skipped him up, drawing his cards on consecrated Sphinx. Good blade's going to resolve anyway. And time. All right, so they're going to finish Daryl's turn, and they're going to take five additional turns between the two of them. So, Daryl's going to get this turn, and two additional turns after that, and Ollie's going to get three turns from the top. And try to knock Daryl down from 18 to 0. So there's no way that Daryl can win in this time, but... And it seems very unlikely that Ollie will be able to win either. He's going to get three turns, but yeah, he's going he's gonna to have to... He's got a nice trap. That can make up quite a bit of damage. Does he have lingering souls in his graveyard? Uh, no, he already flashed the pack. Snap cast the mage. Oh, he's trying. He's, I, yeah, he's, I think he's, he's running the numbers here. He knows that he's going to be, he's unopposed. I mean, uh, Prater's grass. Oh, he's going to be able to take something relevant, a uh, consecrated sink perhaps. Daryl flashing back uh, Forbidden Alchemy in hopes of removing his threats from the deck. He drew one of the Consecrated Sphinxes, but he didn't get the other one. So, Ollie's going to be able to take it. So, Ollie has the mana to, to play the Sphinx now. He can't. Oh, it looks like he took a... He did not take the Sphinx. He may have taken a Dissipate or some other sort of counter spell. Obviously, 
He's, ob oh, he's obviously doing some math. He's got three. He's got three full turns. This turn, and then two additional turns. And two, after. two additional turns after. So there's there's three of the damage. Takes Daryl fifteen. Right. Yes, and plays the geist. And plays the geist. So there's going to be ten more or eight more off of that, off the angels. Right over the course of these right. next two yeah. turns. Right. So he's getting. Bunch of guaranteed damage from those. Assuming he's able to do his concentrated things. Well, remember, uh, Daryl still has Karn. Right. This is now turn two to five. Correct. Not exactly sure what Ollie has under his crater craft. It looks like it dissipates, and that would make a lot of sense. But, you know, we, but we know it wasn't the last concentrated space. It definitely was not. But he, I mean, that's a that's the counter spell is probably the play because he knows he has the dice in his hand. Right. So that he wants to play immediately. That he wants to play immediately. So he's got the mana to play. The, he's got the mana to pay for the to play the dissipate. Um, Obviously, Daryl can't target the dice. Right. He can get rid of the Snapcaster Mage, but not really going to be enough to um, get back into the race. What's that, what's that other card he has in his Daryl has um, in his Forbidden Alchemy? Is that Forbidden Alchemy? Yep. So, yes. so he's going to, I mean, he's going to try to dig for some answers. Potentially. Uh, made probably. Exile a card and play Consecrated Sphinx. So. Daryl only tapped one blue for it. Yep. It, it was indeed the dissipate. going to be able to knock Daryl down to four on this attack. He's got 11 coming across. He only has one card in his hand. He's doing the math. Trying to, trying to figure out if he has to attack Karn down. He can just go straight for Daryl's life total. Playing a Forbidden Alchemy free combat. Yeah. It seems as seems as though the life total is the choice here. Is that a volition? Yeah, that's a volition range. Uh oh. <laughs> so you're gonna be able to liberate Karn once again. Daryl goes down to four. Yeah. He takes the card. So he's going to be able to Punch activate the card it. out of Daryl's hand. The Daryl has some food in now to me. He is going to cast it. So what's Daryl got? Hit a Mike's on Zenith. If it's not, because he's not playing Day of Judgment or anything. We'd like to get Ollie and Trazi after the match, but obviously time is time is already out. So we'll, gonna, we'll try to get him on later on. today. No, this, yeah, because this is a very, really interesting match to, to, to talk about. You know, got to tell you, it looked like he was ready to lose oh, in yeah. the middle of game two. Uh, David Ayers got a little oh, a ratchet Darryl bomb, Ayers. but Ollie has the card, so he's going to be able to exile it and then make and his token with Geist the same track. 
Yeah, if he hadn't stolen that car, the ratchet bomb would have been enough to force the draw. Yep. Exciting magic right here, uh, Steve Satan. Very exciting magic. So we go to a, we go to turns. It's a draw. Ame and Trazi, Daryl Ayers, um, certainly. Oh, Daryl conceded. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Very, very gracious move. You know, he knew that Ali had the game completely in hand. Yep. Yeah, classy move by Daryl Ayers right there. Uh, you know, for him, effectively, you know, a loss and a draw at the same time. He knows that Ali had a beat. Yeah. Uh, even though a big part of why Ali was able to get into that game was because Daryl was going to Yep. Daryl was making these plays that he would not have made. If he had 